Hi, Hal. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome to our uh, fourth meetup, Tableau India Healthcare User Group. So it's uh, this is our agenda today. So we are going to have a. Um, uh, we are going to have a session on uh, dashboard designer skills uh, from Rajavel Selvraj Ganeshan. Then we are going to have a. You know, uh, lucky draw for a Tableau e-learning license. So it will be a, a, a software which will be selecting a random people, a random uh, winner uh, through an uh, online app. So this is our uh, agenda today. So let me introduce our speaker to you today. So, oh, Rajavel Selvaraj Ganeshan uh, is a business intelligence architect working for Express. He has secured three times MicroStrategy Master Title and Certified Intelligence Center Director. He has a unique blend of product management and hands-on experience in data warehousing, reporting, visualization, and advanced analytics. Over the past eight years, he has served as a technical lead for service implementation since. He also has experience in launching new products, building an enterprise business intelligence solution, building mobile apps on iPhone, iPad using micro strategy and turning around failed projects successfully. Uh, let's welcome Rajavel sir. Hey guys, uh, thanks Solomon for having me here. Uh, uh, so as Solomon mentioned, I've been working uh, in IT for like 10 years. Uh, it was great to uh, share my experience here about how to build dashboard. Uh, let me go ahead, share my screen, and then uh, explain what I'm going to talk today. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so today I'm going to talk about uh, dashboard designer skills. Uh, what are the key things that you have to keep in mind uh, when you're working with dashboard or storytelling for that matter? Uh, I know most of the organizations go with traditional grid reports. Uh, but there are uh, users who are interested to look at the data visually rather than uh, uh, in a grid format. So how, how can you design the dashboard? How can you come up with that experience? What are the points you have to keep in mind when you're working as a dashboard designer? That's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so the number one that you have to keep in mind uh, is to go like what, what exactly you're trying to solve with dashboard. Like you need to have a goal. Are you going to uh, identify list of patients uh, coming in for a specific treatment? For example, emergency room, like how many patients are coming in in an hospital? Uh, how, how much traffic is there within emergency room? How much patients are waiting? Uh, for a pair and contrast with my INVIS dashboard, uh, which I'm going to explain uh, in the end, uh, show in the end, INVIS dashboard. Uh, so when I uh, started with INVIS dashboard uh, in 2020, my goal was uh, organ donation. So I was focusing on uh, sharing information to the healthcare people or to the normal people, layman people, uh, to understand about organ donation. So that was my goal. Uh, so that's my goal. So I'm just comparing and contrasting with the key pointers here so you can easily understand and relate it. Uh, the second point that you need to keep in mind is like you have to uh, know your KPI of focus. Like what are your key performance indicator or the uh, measures or the dimensions that you're going to show in the dashboard. Uh, so take for example, in my INVIS, I was coming up with like how many transplant has happened in 2019 and how many people are uh, dying every day uh, due to organ transplant not being available. Uh, and what is the overall uh, uh, statistics of people in, in across the globe or within US uh, with organ transplantation waiting, waiting in pipeline? So those are some of the questions that comes in my mind. And then I have to jot down the list of KPIs that is involved uh, to build an effective dashboard. Like I, I was interested to show by ethnicity organ transplant, 
uh, by organ uh, list of people waiting for uh, transplantation and then how many people are donating the organs that statistics so those are some of the uh, key performance indicators I have to come up with and then list it down so that i can have a focused vision to build that dashboard so that's the second point you have to keep in mind when you're working as a dashboard uh, designer and the third one is like you need to know your audience like you need to know whether your audience is web based or mobile based or tablet based or uh, iphone based or android phone based so you have to understand like where your audience are like that's that's one of the key thing before you start your dashboard design uh, so that you can design a responsive dashboard if it is like a global audience like web mobile and uh, uh, ipad uh, so if it is just web focused then you can like use more screen space you can add more visualization or more data points or more kpis uh, so you need to understand the audience and then come up with your design so that's one of the key factor you need to keep in mind so as part of my inves process i had to list down who who will be my audience so i have to focus on worldwide uh, people understanding the data i have to also uh, focus on uh, a mobile focused uh, dashboard so that they can easily look at look at the organ transplantation or organ donation uh, information on the mobile as well as on the web so i have to think about both both the audience in my mind when i was building this inves dashboard uh, so those were the points i have to list it down uh, and the number 4 which is which is my favorite part uh, which is about wireframing like when you are working on a dashboard i highly recommend come with a wireframe first like don't just go blindly jumping into uh, building the dashboard you have to have a pencil sketch wireframe or you can use figma or you can use powerpoint or you can use excel uh, or you can use adobe xd for that matter so all these tools that i'm telling all are free actually you can just download you can build a quick wireframe like i would like to show a geo map here i would like to show a slider here or i would like to show a drop down selector here i would like to show the patient information here i would like to have a profile photo of a doctor or whatever you are trying to analyze so that's that should be your wireframing process you should come up with uh, so here for example i've done some sample wireframe like i'm looking for a geographic study in the initial page uh, and i have a landing page with list of icons navigation button and then from there i'm going to sales or i'm going to uh, enterprise dashboard or i'm going to subscription or i'm going to logout action so you try to do a pencil sketch wireframe at least so that you have a focused vision of what you are going to deliver as part of dashboard design uh, so that's that's one of the key process and uh, uh, an interesting process which you have to always do when you're working with a dashboard and the number fifth point is like less is more don't keep too much of things into your dashboard try to keep it less like if you keep too much then it will become cluttered and then you wouldn't you won't know what you're sharing to the audience so you should be like targeting the audience with key key information which is very very helpful uh, to take decision from your data like show the key kpis some visualization highlighting the percentage distribution or the uh, categorical distribution and then show the trend uh, so just don't don't keep too much try to keep it less less is always good and you can always have multiple uh, navigation button in the left or in the top where you can navigate and then see drill and drill down and see the data so that's that's the another important factor you should keep in mind while working with dashboard uh, one of the uh, other factor i would say is like try to use navigation button like navigation buttons are powerful uh, don't put everything in one page try to have navigation button try to have a story of your data like i have a home page i have a organ transplantation page i have a, a waiting list page and then i have like process and then uh, how geo how us wise the organ transplantation and then how, how geographically the organ transplantation is like i have a navigation button which can easily help me to click and navigate and see the data or understand or study the data so try to use navigation button as as much as possible there are a lot of uh, sites where they provide free icons you can take advantage of it like noun project or flat icon uh, which provides free icons or you can even build your own icon with figma uh, so those are some of the things uh, to keep in mind while working with navigation button be creative uh, and innovative always uh, i know like uh, sometimes if you are like working on regular grid report you you get bored uh, but when you're coming with dashboard you should try to be creative like what creativity and innovation you can bring within the dashboard 
uh, take for example here i have talked about uh, the organ donation process like how the patient is going through the journey and then how the donor is going through the journey and then how they are like integrating and then finally the organ transplantation happens in this process so you should try to uh, come up come up with the way that the user can understand your data and then relate it uh, so that it, it 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 makes a powerful impact of what you're trying to convey from the dashboard so that should be uh, uh, like some sort of innovation you have to come and think and then do it like here for example i've used a button here where you can switch to a web based view or if you click back again it will come and switch back to the mobile based view like some sort of innovation you can have a button to look at navigate to the video like if you have a tutorial of your application you can even click a video uh, have a video button so you can navigate and see the uh, overall uh, application flow so if a new user comes in how they have to understand the application that sort of information and also have tooltip uh, wherever possible meaningful tooltip uh, don't just go with default to tooltip just to have have a meaningful tooltip where you can understand the data uh, so that's some of the innovation i have applied in this but yeah feel free to go with whatever you like uh, but try to be uh, creative and innovative and the eighth point i would like to share is like uh, different types of charts and diagrams uh, i know there are like tons of visualization tableau offers and any any bi tool you go uh, tons of visualizations are there uh, but try to use visualization meaningful to your data. Uh, don't just use, like, for example, you are uh, trying to show a trend, but don't show a pie chart there. Pie chart is basically for a person distribution. Uh, so trend is always good to go with line chart or a bar chart for that matter. So you need to know, like, which visualization to use uh, based on your data that you have and based on the uh, KPI and the uh, dimensions that you're going to take it up. Uh, and I have seen, like, lot of good visualization in tableau with card chart or with sankey chart uh, or with timeline chart i mean it, it's all very good as long as you choose the data correctly uh, so make sure you choose the visualization based on your data not just blindly going and selecting a visualization when you're working with dashboard so that's one of the key things you have to keep in mind and number nine which is one of the important factor fonts and colors uh, some of the organization will have corporate standards. You have to follow that. Uh, or if you are having, if you are trying to share a dashboard for a global audience, try to uh, keep color blindness in as one of the factor. Uh, as per statistics, like there are like high, high, highly men, men's are like color blindness in the in the overall global uh, world. So keep a color blindness factor in mind when you're designing a dashboard. That could be a user with color blindness who can look at it and then also understand the data. So you cannot go with like some bright colors, which doesn't uh, uh, attract, which doesn't help all the audience to look at your data and then understand it. So keep that factor as well in your mind. So, and try to keep the colors like as less as possible. Don't, don't bring more than five colors in your dashboard. Try to keep like three to five, don't go beyond that uh, or else it will become too uh, flashy. So avoid that. And number 10, like responsive design. Like I said, nowadays, BI tool provide responsive design, like you de develop ones which can render on your iPad and then render on your iPhones or the Android phones. Uh, so when you design, make sure you follow the responsive design best practices because the, in, in Tableau, you have container concept, you have floating concept. So when you go with any of these concepts, you need to have your best practices mind in mind when coming to responsive design. Uh, I'll share one tip in the end, which can help you, but yeah, try to uh, think through that when you're working in the dashboard. Uh, next one uh, is one of uh, my another favorite, uh, like don't do apple to apple conversion. Uh, what, what I mean by here is like, there could be a customer who wants to convert a dashboard from MicroStrategy to Tableau or Tableau to Power BI or Tableau to MicroStrategy. Uh, so the user might be telling you that I need exact data of all the features that is there in uh, one tool on another tool, but you should be able to educate the user stating that there are other good features that the tool offers rather than sticking with the same functionality or same features that the other tool provides. So always try to uh, 
do some impact analysis when you're working on such uh, dashboards, like from one tool to another tool, and then try to recommend to the business user what are the challenges that you have with the new tool, and then what can be done to overcome or what other alternate feature that can add more value to the dashboard. So that 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 would be my one of my point uh, when you're working with dashboard conversion from one BI tool to another BI tool. Don't stick with apple to apple conversion. Try to come out of the box and then try to use the tool functionality or tool best features to showcase the business users. And use selectors wherever possible. Like if you see here, I have used selectors to change the chart, like line chart, area chart, or bar chart, uh, which will help you to slice and dice. I'm having a year selector here. Uh, based on the selection of values, I can see the trend of Amazon profit. Uh, this is one of the makeover Monday. Uh, data set, but yeah, try to use selectors wherever possible rather than putting too much of visualization. Selectors will help you to slice and dice and look at your data in a different perspective. Uh, so that's one thing when you're working on dashboard, keep in mind. And the next one is like, uh, try to have information or tool tip or annotation uh, where you can explain the data. Here, for example, I'm trying to show the tourism rise and fall. I'm trying to say like when you uh, move from one uh, area to another year i'm trying to show like in annotation like the country and the year in which how much value they have made in tourism and how the covid has impacted in tourism a short description so and, and also if you see when i mouse over i'm able to see the trend uh, and information or the tool tip of uh, pattern of each country so try to add information uh, window or tool tip or annotation which can add more value to your dashboard. Uh, so that's one thing you should keep in mind. The next thing uh, I would like to play a video here. Uh, this is more of like adding question and answers. Like nowadays tool offer uh, natural language generation. Like you ask question and then you get the data uh, from the tool by itself. You don't have to drag and drop what metric, what dimension you want. You can just search and then you can uh, drag and drop. So when you design a dashboard, you have to uh, like for an ad hoc user, like the, if, the, if a user is building the dashboard, you should tell them like, take advantage of this feature. I'm going to play a video. Uh, it's a very short video uh, to show you the functionality what I'm talking about. You need answers? Ask your data. No, seriously, just ask your data. It's pretty easy, really and everyone can do it. He can ask it to help find new opportunities, or he can ask it to check out the competition. You can ask pretty much anything. Okay, not that. Well, maybe that. She can ask it to evaluate market positioning. And he can ask it to help figure out if it's gonna be a great vintage. You can even ask it how to bring in the professionals. So, any questions? Ask data. And yeah, so that's what I was trying to convey. Uh, like, try to ask, I mean, when you're dealing with a user who is building the dashboard by themselves, you have to show them the power of the tool. Like, ask, ask them to use this feature. Like, when you type in the question, it'll automatically bring in your dimensions and measures and it will automatically show you the chart, like the best fit chart for that particular data, like whether it's a trend or it's a, uh, a distribution, or if you are uh, looking for uh, an area chart, it automatically brings in and then shows you like what exactly your data is uh, uh, trying to tell a story, like rather than uh, searching through a catalog of dimension, catalog of meshes, you can tell them to use this ask data feature. Uh, Tableau offers, even Power BI has it, MicroStrategy has it, any BI tool you go, uh, nowadays natural language generation is coming in play. So when you work with self-service user, try to keep this feature in mind and try to uh, ask them to use this feature uh, when building the dashboard by themselves for a self-service user. So that's one of the things I would like to highlight. Uh, I think those are the 14 points I had in my mind to share with you all from a dashboard designer perspective. Uh, I'll share two tips uh, for for the uh, dashboards. Uh, one tip is like uh, this keep only and exclude. Uh, I highly recommend to uncheck that. Uh, 
because if you keep that, your visualization might look odd, actually. Uh, I noticed in Tableau. So you can always uncheck that. Just keep the tooltip simple, plain and simple like this, uh, which is easy to understand. So how to uncheck that? Always when you publish, make sure each visualization you uncheck this include command button. If you uncheck this, these buttons will not come and it will look cleaner and neater. Uh, or else it, you will always have keep only exclude and then someone might come and select this keep only and your graph or visualization might become uh, look uh, different or look odd actually. Uh, so that's one of my key tip. And the second tip I would like to share is like uh, when you design a dashboard in Tableau, uh, specifically with floating uh, option, uh, when you go for uh, mobile, it might look totally uh, different or totally odd. Like I said, responsive design will not work properly. So how can you avoid that? When you, before you publish, delete this phone layout. So if you delete this phone layout, then when you look at the mobile, it will look how you have developed in the web format. So it's easy to look at the dashboard in mobile. So this is one of the tip uh, I learned from the community, Tableau community. Uh, through the iInvest process, I want you guys to make sure you publish a dashboard by deleting this uh, phone layout so that it looks good on the phone as well. Uh, or else it looks completely distorted in the phone when you use floating uh, option design. So that's the second tip I would like to share. And uh, some of the post, uh, inspiring post, this is one of the posts by Komal Patel. Uh, the same process I explained with 14 points, uh, she has put in, in eight point, how do you reverse engineer uh, a data vis approach? Like you have to keep your end user in mind when you're designing a dashboard, uh, like I said, and then you need to decide the order of placement. Like you have to start with summary and then come, or come down to detail. Uh, and then you need to identify which chart goes best for your data. Like what question you're trying to convey with the chart. Uh, and do you check if all your data is clean and right format? Of course, when you start dashboard, you have to check your data first and then look at the uh, visualization part. And then, like I said, create a wireframe or a pencil sketch or a PowerPoint uh, in mind, and then you can start developing after that. Uh, don't just jump in straight away building the dashboard. Just try to have wireframe in your mind or put it on a pencil sketch and then try to start it. And then, yeah, you have to come with a story that you're trying to convey. Uh, and then, yeah, some of the points she has mentioned, look at Excel or look at the data source, understand the data. Of course, you have to understand the data, then only you can come with wireframe. Uh, so these are some of the good posts I felt uh, inspiring to share to the dashboard designers, uh, where you can reverse engineer and then answer this question before you start building it. Uh, some of the blocks that you can find for Tableau, uh, Flood Large Twins, uh, uh, Tableau Magic, Play for Data, uh, Sarah's blog, and then um, uh, Lindsay blog, uh, and then Rajiv blog, a couple of blogs. I have my personal blog as well. You can always go and check uh, some of the helpful tips. Like you can use, if you're having an image, if you want to remove the background, you can use remove.bg. If you want icon, you can go here. If you want some background image for free, you can go and check it from unsplash.com. Uh, if you want some icon, you can take it from freepick.com. Uh, Figma is a design tool, uh, and then Canva is also a design tool. So some of the links, helpful links for dashboard design, uh, I highly recommend use this uh, for your dashboard design process. Also, I would like to quickly uh, show you uh, the dashboard, iInvest dashboard, which I have built, uh, like keeping all those pointers in mind, like I had a wireframe and then I designed this. So if you see here, I, I started with what is organ transplantation and then who can donate, and then the complexity involved uh, with the organ transplantation. Like each and every organ has some time frame. Within that time frame, you have to transplant it, or else it, the organ will be of no use to the uh, patient. So that I have captured here, and then I have added some innovation here. One, one donor can donate like eight organs. So I've put some innovation here, uh, adding the uh, uh, person image where you can easily understand the data. And then the patient journey, like I said, uh, this is the patient journey and this is a donor journey. On mouse over, I'm trying to give the tool tip of like what this process is all about. So the patient is looking for a transplant. So they go and list their uh, name in the hospitals and then they wait for the organ. Whereas a donor is, uh, if, it, if the donor is dead, then they're ready to declare uh, their uh, organs or 
they will refer through uh, the providers, hospital providers, and then they become a donor, and then they check a match run between the patient and donor, and if it matches, then the process proceeds after that. So I, I clearly explained this in the tooltip with a process diagram so you can understand. And each of this process have given some ethnicity-wise data or some uh, organ uh, recovered overall in US, I've, I've just put some visualization which can uh, relate and contrast to each of the process. Uh, and of course, I've added some facts in between so that you can understand uh, what exactly organ transplantation challenges are uh, across the globe. Every 10 minutes, a patient is getting added to the waiting list. So, uh, so some of the painful facts which, which impacts the uh, users who tries to look at this data and understand the data uh, who do not know about this organ transplantation. Uh, and of course, here I have put timeline like how the doctors have uh, had a breakthrough with respect to organ transplantation. Uh, of course, it's not a visualization. I've put a sheet on top of it and the tooltip. Uh, I know there are visualization where you can achieve this timeline, uh, but right now I've put a background image, I've put a sheet on top of it uh, and build it rather than spending too much of time on this. Uh, so that's one of the thing. Uh, and then if you scroll down, you have a map which talks about US, which region is like more uh, organ transplantation is happening. If you see uh, East Coast, it's, it seems average, whereas West Coast is heavily used. And then if you look at the South, Texas is like had done more transplantation. And if you look at the uh, North, uh, the transplantations are less. So heavy usage on West Coast and then East Coast uh, within US. Uh, and I also was trying to convey opt-in versus opt-out. What is opt-in, what is opt-out? Uh, so there are certain countries where uh, by default, you are supposed to donate your organs when you are uh, dead. So that, that categorization I've explained here, opt-in versus opt-out, which countries with opt-in and which countries with opt-out. So you have to enroll, then only you can donate. So those are countries in blue color, which is opt-in. Whereas opt-out is like by default, everybody's, uh, uh, like automatically you are presumed to be a donor. Like when you die, you have to donate organs to anybody who's looking for a donor. So that's opt-out system. So certain countries follow that. Uh, so that explanation I've given with this uh, map and I've given some helpful links in the bottom and what was my inspiration to design this uh, dashboard. I watched this series and then I saw the pain of organ transplantation and then I stayed, I took this as a goal and then I built this dashboard. And like I said, I have, build a mobile view as well so if you click here mobile view uh, it basically goes and uh, renders the mobile view of this dashboard with navigation button uh, give it a minute i think due to inactivity it's just reloading okay so now i'm going to click the mobile view yeah so in mobile view i basically uh, went with navigation button Okay, there is some glitch here, but yeah, as I showed you in the presentation, I have a navigation button. Uh, I also wanted to share the Figma. Figma is one of the designing tool where you can design your dashboard uh, flow. Like once you have a pencil sketch wireframe, you can even use Figma to design a flow and you can use this as a background image for your dashboard and you can place your measures in respective section and visualization on top of it and you can navigate from one page to another page one example of how to build a design. Uh, I also have an article explaining the same thing in my blog, if you feel free to look at it and learn from it. And there is a good video which Autumn uh, Batani has shared from Tableau community. Uh, if you see here, there is a video which talks about how to do uh, a design in Figma and how to do a design in PowerPoint, how to do a design in Illustrator. If you are like not familiar with these tools, go with PowerPoint. Like you can watch this video, you can learn how to build uh, shapes and then designs like this kind of design in PowerPoint. Uh, Kevin Flerlage has shared his experience how to design it in PowerPoint. It's easy actually. I mean, you don't have to uh, have be an expert to design this. Uh, if you just learn through this video, 23 minutes, just watch, try to build it. You will eventually learn how to use PowerPoint effectively for dashboard designing. Uh, so if you have Illustrator, of course, you can watch this video from uh, Sam uh, Passens. He has like 
done beautiful dashboards in Tableau, and he always use Illustrator uh, as the design. And also you have Figma design. So you can you can watch these videos, get inspiration, and you can learn from uh, from it to have an effective and cleaner dashboard uh, and a rich looking uh, dashboard. Uh, that's all I wanted to share today. Any questions? Feel free to put it in the question and answers. I'll be happy to share. Over to you, uh, Solomon. Any, any questions? Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, we don't have any open questions yet. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. And a nice dashboard organ transplantation, nice colors. Uh, also, thank you for the uh, useful tips, 14 points on how to create a good dashboard and also the personal tip. Uh, I just came to know that today that include and exclude hide. Yeah. It was a very useful to, tip for me today. Mm -hmm. uh, so do we have any questions? Uh, there's a con. Thanks for the insightful information. Thank you. So if there are no questions, we can uh, go to the next, next uh, session. Yeah. So. As you all expecting today, we have a, a lucky draw winner for a Tableau uh, e license. So, whoever is available now, we are going to take their names and we'll find we'll find a lucky winner through one uh, random uh, name generator website. I'll, I'll share my screen. I'll, I'll tell I'll tell about the um, license. So you have to go to elearning dot com. Then you have to create your Tableau account using your email like email address then uh, the winner the winner of this game will get an access code where you can you register uh, in the tablet e learning center and you can start using this code is valid uh, for 12 months from the date you activate the code so let me share my screen uh, and see who is going to win this lucky prize. Is the screen visible? Is the wheel of yeah. names visible? Yes. Yeah. So we have. Uh, I'll I'll recheck the number of participants once so that I won't miss anyone. So we so we have nine attendees as of now. Uh, 
आखिल वर्मन एलन रॉजी भानु रेखा किरण पाटिल डेसी है जॉन मुक्तर सतीश कुमार तेज ओके Yeah, screen sharing just stopped. So, yeah, yeah, we can see it. So these are the names. So this is according. I'll shuffle some some. Okay, should I start? Yeah. Should I spin? Let's see the lucky winner. <laughs> So it's uh, Satish Kumar. So uh, Satish Kumar, can you share your email ID with us? So I, we will send the uh, license to you to your email in another uh, fifteen minutes. you can talk now hello hello yeah. can you hear me yes yeah yeah, yeah hi uh, hi solomon and hi uh, rajwin thank you yeah yes please hope you are doing well raj yeah glad to help <laughs> okay do you have any questions Uh, no, sir. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can end this session. Thank you all for joining this uh, wonderful evening, and we have, hope we have learned a uh, lot of useful uh, tips on building dashboards. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Bye, bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, no problem, Salaman. Take care. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Yeah. yeah.